Hello, I'm uh, Dr. William Zogby. I'm the chair of cardiology at Houston Methodist Hospital, and it's a pleasure to have with us today Dr. Kim Williams, uh, chair of cardiology at Rush in Chicago. Pleasure having you, Kim. It was an amazing grand rounds. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> it, it's really an honor to be here at the Storied Institution and uh, to actually uh, interact with your faculty. It's uh, very bright and engaging and really a, a tremendous time. I appreciate it. For those of you who are joining us, uh, you really need to see this grand rounds. And it was enlightening. It was engaging. You can tell how many questions there were afterwards. Um, you know, he, he, Kim was, was a star today. And it hit a chord that uh, on nutrition and cardiovascular health and total health right. in a way that uh, and you, you mentioned it is not as much inculcated in yes. our literature, meaning right. our cardiovascular literature, the jack, the circulation, and, and the impact for general that most people read. Right. Uh, we have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. You showed a lot of data of how just even with minor alteration going to a vegan, uh, a gradation Right. In, in, uh, in risk, in mortality, and so many other things. How, how, can, how can we get the message there? I'm pretty sure it's going to be complicated, and there is, there's a lot of roadblocks, but there's a lot of opportunity because the data is so strong. It's certainly an opportunity. <coughs> so numerically, what comes to mind is the 3%, that we have 3% of the population that are vegans. <coughs> and if you look at some <coughs> metric like the American Heart Association, Simple 7, where you're trying to have a good cholesterol, know your blood sugar and have it controlled, um, know your blood pressure, n control your weight, exercise, mm -hmm. eat healthily. If, what percentage of Americans you actually do, do that? that? It's 3%. It, it is that amazing. can hit all seven. And so we, we actually have a lot of opportunity, as you say. Um, and how do we do it? It's really a, a lot of public messaging. And we, we have to fight the public messaging that's coming from the other side, which is commercial interests that increase you know, f fatty food consumption and, and the like. Uh, <coughs> you know, perhaps there is a role for that, but it really shouldn't be the role that it's been. It's actually amazing that in the United States, we really don't have public messaging. I have right. not seen it in the Correct. media that most people are connected to, be it in TV, Right. Or, or other places, it is hidden somewhere. It is not a loud voice, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and if you have a, a voice of you know uh, consumption of unhealthy product, right, versus this weak voice, uh, you know, is the ACC going to do something about it? Obviously, this is an organization that and the American Heart Association. That's right. Also. That's right. So we, we did start, uh, as you know, the, with, with your leadership, the you know, Population Health Initiative. We sort of morphed that more into dealing with the issues of the day, which hopefully will not last forever in terms of changes <coughs> in health care uh, reform that are happening. But we have to get back to actually doing community-based uh, education and screening programs, let people know that their cholesterol and their hemoglobin A1C and their blood pressures are not controlled and get them to see their physician before something happens. Um, these are the kind of initiatives where the college can really make uh, a huge difference. Uh, we have a, a, a lot of changes that, that we need to make and it is, it is definitely going against the culture. Um, I would say that there's a lot of literature out there and there's a big disconnect between cardiology where it would be the most good um, and that literature, a lot of it's in journals that we just don't read. So it's a, it's a challenge for us. I had a wish uh, when I talked to the Surgeon General that actually companies, be it TV companies or otherwise, uh, particularly uh, you know, on Saturdays and other things, where they could volunteer, mm -hmm. donate one minute of public education on various things for prevention. And uh, I think, you know, people volunteer in so many ways. Sure. Why not ask, actually, our, you know, big conglomerates that can influence. Right. Just a, a minute of time to do that. And I, I do hope we can push for it because, again, the messaging out right. there I is really not out there. Right. And other countries, actually, <coughs> believe it or not, they've taken on this mantle and do something. So, that, so that's obviously one issue. The other issue is... Uh, you practice what you teach. Yes. Okay. And and uh, what are some of the 
major obstacles that you have, and you shared some with us uh, in Grand Rounds, that you know to get this message and stick with it. Right. And uh, it's hard at times to go from a really very bad lifestyle and and, and diet right. to uh, to something like vegan. Right. Uh, is there is there an easing gradually to get there and ultimately and you know and is it and I would think it probably is beyond just knowledge. Is how how do you translate knowledge into action? <laughs> well, Big things. <laughs> you're absolutely right, and I would say that <clears throat> one of our biggest allies is fear, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, you know, in Chicago, we like to say that uh, I could, it was our mayor that uh, was quoted as, you know, making sure that you always take advantage of a crisis. <laughs> and so we actually do that very well. And when somebody comes in with acute coronary syndrome, a stroke, hypertensive, heart disease, they're, you know, getting that type 2 myocardial infarction, this is an opportunity to change someone completely. And uh, they're, they're listening to you. And if, you're, if you go to the bedside and you get your hospital to change the food on the menu, and you start feeding them healthier, healthier foods, you can really make a difference. Uh, outside of that, we are fighting culture, and it's very difficult. Uh, one of the best ways to do it, and you know, d d regardless of your politics, we have to have admiration for what the First Lady uh, has done over the past few years. And people joke that you know, when she was talking about let's move, nobody did, <laughs> okay? Um, so she started <coughs> talking about fruit and vegetables. And that message at least started she's getting, she's getting them into schools in Norfolk, Virginia, getting uh, kids to just change their taste buds and make healthier choices. That's probably where we have to start. I'm not giving up on this current generation because you can make dramatic changes once somebody has three vessel disease with plaque regression. You know, I know my, my cardiology colleagues believe in statins. There's great evidence for that, and they don't do so much diet. My dietary colleagues believe in diet, <clears throat> and there's good data for that, and they don't believe in statins. Well, I believe in both <laughs> because there's evidence for both. And so I, you know, what I've seen, and actually I got a uh, nice case that I had in the clinic yesterday where the uh, clearly familiar hyperlipidemia, LDL of 213 because he had stopped the statin and started eating animal products again. And this, so it's hard to sustain these things. But when he was doing both, LDL was 70. Uh, almost unheard of drop uh, because the two of them are very powerful. With one of them, which he was doing, from time to time, doing only one of them, yes. 130, 170 for the LDL. Not the 213, but certainly not 70. It takes, it takes both. You hit hard on oils. Yes. What's your stance on olive oil? Obviously, we talked about the Mediterranean right. diet, that we don't have a, a comparison, actually, with, vegeta with the vegan diet. Not yet. Right? We don't know <coughs> that yet. But um, well, what's your stance on it? So it's, it's interesting that there are, when you take the oil out of something, then that's when you're getting it concentrated, and that's when you worry that it'll switch over into your consumption, meaning you know the fat you eat is gonna be the fat you wear. Um, but the oil in its natural state, like in almonds and cashews, the, the amount is being balanced by all of the like dietary the fiber, really. exactly. And so, uh, so that actually works pretty well. Um, I have to admit, I, I uh, assiduously avoid fried foods, um, um, being concerned that uh, when what most, most people don't realize is that you can start off with an oil that's not going to hurt your cholesterol. And my c biggest personal health concern was cholesterol. If it's monounsaturated or, or polyunsaturated, it doesn't really hurt your cholesterol. Um, but when you take uh, olive oil, which has a lot of monounsaturated fat, and you cook it to high heat, that little bubbling, that's double bonds popping. No, d definitely. And, and you're getting I, Believe it or fat. not, believe it or not, growing <coughs> up in a Mediterranean, you know, in Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, definitely you, does, you don't cook with it. Absolutely. You don't cook with Absolutely olive oil. You right. eat it if you want to cook something. Uh, on you add it at the end, so it's not boiling. There I mean, you it's, go. it's very interesting, See, and this is before, <laughs> before any data on it, because you talk to you know to any person. Right. Uh, actually, it changes the taste at the same time. It does. That's right. <coughs> so, but yeah, once once you've fried it, so to speak, the content on the bottle is not the content in terms of saturated fat anymore. So, in your salads, what do you <coughs> add to your dressing? I'm actually fine with a balsamic vinaigrette. You know, raspberry vinaigrette would be my favorite, and um, because I, you know, I'm I do believe in total lifestyle, 
you know, not to pick on any particular company, but uh, <laughs> I actually filled that green circle <laughs> with 60 minutes of exercise every day somehow. Even when I'm working, I'll work on the bike, I'll do whatever it is that I can to fill it in uh, a full 60. And so I'm, I can eat some monounsaturated fat that's not going to hurt my cholesterol, and I'm not going to wear it because I'm just going to burn it. And if, if we could get everyone to, to focus on the combination of diet and exercise, it would be good. I, it is true that you cannot exercise your way out of a bad diet, that's very uh, true. but you can at least help. People who've converted to a much more restrictive diet, <coughs> right? Restri mm -hmm. I mean, you can call it restrictive in a negative sense, but more positive diet, if you will, right. towards vegan. Do they miss something? You know, if, I mean, obviously this is rational behavior, yes. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Do they mi I mean, is there some craving? Because at times in the Atkins diet, obviously the other extreme, <laughs> right. uh, th there is this rebound of, you know, people don't stick with it as, as much. Correct. Correct. So is there, is there such a, a phenomenon? So you, you, what I think the biggest craving is to fit in with your family and your friends, particularly when you go out to a restaurant. And so we had a wonderful time last night. I could talk to the guy. He said, no, that has animals, that has this, and you know, and so you really don't Actually want Actually, yours was much more appealing than, <laughs> <laughs> than ours. Oh, they did a wonderful <laughs> job. But, and uh, we're seeing that more and more, that as the, among, you know, vegans only 3% of the U.S. population, but 10% uh, in California, for example, and uh, for, ve for vegans, and vegetarians is 10% around the entire country. And so it, it behooves every business to have at least a portion of their menu that'll fit in. And so we are seeing more, more healthy uh, opportunities because that's really important. That's the, the longing is a, the social networking um, that you, you feel like you're isolated. Um, but there is, and I, I thought you might be asking about micronutrient craving, and there is one thing that we always have to talk about, and that's B12. Everyone thinks that you get B12 from beef and pork. It's true. But why is that? It's because those animals eat dirty vegetables. They don't make B12. No mammals do. Mm -hmm. It comes from the soil, the bacteria in the soil, and as long as they're eating so you have stuff. to supplement it. Right. So you either eat dirt, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not going to eat animals, or just take a B12 supplement. So I don't particularly like dirty vegetables. Any departing thoughts that you know our viewers need need to know? I mean, it's been it's been phenomenal. Well, I, I really appreciate the opportunity. I, I would say that uh, everyone can make a change, and it may be small at first, uh, as you were saying. Some people it, it needs to be gradual, but make a change. Um, try to get that exercise in. Try to change the diet, and then diffuse it out to the patients that you see and your coworkers. You can really make a difference. Kim, it's been a pleasure having Absolutely. you. We really enjoyed you. And I think it, the message has resonated. And hopefully it will resonate in our professionals as, as most importantly in the public. Thank you so Great much for having you. me here. Absolutely. <laughs>